Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a Hi, this is Carl. I wrote this song. I I'm Mike's friend. My turn ons are satin sheets. I love to be outdoors. Follow me on Twitter. Jokes to call. The French duh, not the duh duh. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube. With Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length Welcome to L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Hey, Hi, Mike. Carl. Thanks for having me. I am an official co-host now, and I, I welcome our audience. I was going to thank you, but there's no need to thank you. I'm a regular. You've been a regular on this show for, I don't know, the second year. We've been oh, I've been the... regularly booked. Yes. We're right now streaming first on Mutiny Radio.fm, the Internet's uh, radio station from San Francisco. You can listen to us every Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We follow Found Round Sound with Scott o at noon, and we're right before Ugly Sundays. Uh, so you can tune in to mutinyradio.fm uh, beginning at noon PST and listen to some music, then watch a movie with us, and then listen to more music. How about that? We're going to watch a full-length movie on YouTube. We also have a podcast by our acronym, L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. We also have a YouTube channel that uh, Colin... That Carl, sorry, uh, Carl. That's I mean, all right. Colin's equally as much a friend as me. <laughs> <laughs> like the uh, same level. We we are here on YouTube as well. Uh, you can watch us yourself. Hey, look, I'm wearing my mini radio shirt. An exclusive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Holy cow. Those, what? You can't just get those for free. Mike Spiegelman's wearing a mutiny radio comedy <laughs> festival in Los Angeles. Yeah, that's like the last year and a half. <laughs> um, we, so... You can follow us on the YouTube, you can follow us on a podcast, or you can stream here as right now on Mutiny Radio. Mutiny Radio can use your donations. Go ahead to Venmo, donate at Mutiny Radio. Carl, what is the movie we are watching? What full-length movie are we watching today? Today we will watch The Kid Brother, 1927. The Kid Brother, okay. 1927. The channel we like is <laughs> Title Films. Uh -oh. Way to hit it over the head. It's what, films. What's that's the catch? What what's like. the catch? Okay, so go ahead and type in The Kid Brother. That's from 1927, and that's a special year. We'll tell you in a sec. It is hosted by the channel <coughs> films. 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 Click the link, hit pause, move it to 000. Uh, we have a really excited, Carl produces yeah. this show, did the theme song. He yeah. syncs up the videos, yeah. and he interviewed a celebrity comedian. I did. To, yeah. So while you go on YouTube and figure this out, chill out. Carl has an interview with a uh, celebrity comedian. And the celebrity comedian will give you talk about himself, herself, and then we'll do the celebrity comedian countdown. And when that comic says go, we go. Carl, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Celebrity Comedian Countdown, this time with Gary G. Garcia. Welcome, Gary. What's up, baby? Now, Gary, thank you for having you, me. yeah, well, thank you for being there. I, being here, I mean, I have you here because you are a big time, hot shot headliner comedian. I was excited to get you, but the first thing I want to say is, when people look you up, they got to include the G, right? Yeah, Gary, you, G Garcia. Very important. Otherwise, very important. I come up uh, when you Google Gary Garcia. I come up like on page nine. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot more people named Gary Garcia that are doing much more than I am. <laughs> um, but if you put in Gary G Garcia, I pop right up. Now you were a epic, epic records recording artist. Yeah, Tell back in uh, 1992. How did you get from there to here? Okay, so we're going back to 92. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that time and what was going on with you in your life. <clears throat> uh, well. We had uh we had we had started what at the time was the first live hip hop band. Uh -huh. So it was uh you know live guitar, bass, drums, 
uh, we had a live DJ and then we had a dude, my boy, Peter George, who triggered the samples and I was the vocalist uh -huh. and we were called uh, smoking suckers with logic. <laughs> That's great. Smoke is, uh, SSL for short. You know, now, we, we, had, we had a very brief, very quick pop of light. You know, I got to get into Rolling Stone magazine. You know, I had a little <laughs> article there, first issue of Vibe. So it was very quick and we faded very fast. Well, we, that is still. We killed ourselves, really. We, we shot our own foot feet off. <laughs> well, a hell of a ride. So what, you guys self-destructed in a way? E yeah, no, in every way. That's exactly uh -huh. what happened. We just, you know, you can't give a bunch of, twin I was 22 at the time. When we got signed, we got signed uh, for like 800,000. Wow, it was yeah. a very large, it was a very large uh, deal for, you know, a, a first time band. And uh, everything was looking really good, but our heads blew up before the album did. <laughs> our heads blew up even before the album came out. I mean, we were 22, we didn't have no guidance. So, you know, here it is, we're taking pictures. I was in the first issue of Vibe. I played with Ziggy Marley. I was playing with KRS, wow. I played with Julian Lennon. And, you know, you tend to, well, we also got, I should mention, we got kicked off the Bob Marley tour. I mean, yes. the, the Ziggy Marley tour uh -huh. um, because of, you know, our antics. We were a little crazy. It was, it was a lot of kids from the street and, uh, you know, a lot of things happening quick and no, nobody, you know, we, we, were, we were just wild, man. We went on tour and that was the end of it. Once uh -huh. we got back from the tour, we left, they gave us a 12 passenger van to go on tour, brand new. When we, we, when we bought it back, it looked like it was from Road Warrior. Oh, wow. The windshield was completely shattered. I hit like a wild turkey doing 65 miles an hour in cruise <laughs> control. It was insane. It was an insane ride, but it was fun. You know, we had some moments. I got a song in uh in um Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Uh-huh. They got one of my songs in there. I awesome. got a couple of movies, yeah. So it was cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I mean, I, I understand that it fell apart, you know. Yeah, but then we got blackballed, know. which is very true. You can get blackballed. <laughs> I, I thought that was a myth, but it's actually very true. You can get black wool. You know, we had all the majors coming after us when we first signed with Epic, but then when we broke up with Epic, nobody wanted to touch us. The word was out not to even let us in the door. Yeah. And we weren't, we weren't let in the door. We could have probably broke through it. We were very talented, but I didn't have the patience. Mm -hmm. You know, I was young. Now today, I had kids and all that stuff, start having kids. You are not young anymore, right? Not you're yet. in your 50s like me, and you're yeah. out there doing comedy. Now, your your base is Atlantic City, and this is a tourist spot. So the crowds are good every single night of the week, right? Tell well, me about this. Pretty much. I mean, the winter, it slows down. In the winter, the average, like I said, on a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're probably going to get like 20, sometimes even 15, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, for some reason, Tuesdays, I think it's because they give the free hotel rooms on certain days. So Tuesdays, for some reason, pop. Okay. And uh, then you got the weekends. The weekends carry us through. Saturdays, we're always going to have 100 or more for both shows. And we do two shows every night. And uh, we're supposedly opening up another spot down the boardwalk. I'm not really at liberty to say it yet because I don't think it's been completely finalized. Right. But if that's the case, we'll have another room. Before no, COVID, we have five rooms. So that'll make you have three rooms. Yeah. Then well, well, the Anchor Rock Club. I don't know if we're going through the whole winter with that. They do okay. a lot of rock shows there too. Right now, we have a deal with them where we're doing on uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. Okay. You know. So uh, what was the, I mean before COVID, we had five five rooms every single night of the week. I would do a show in Tropicana, run to run, you know, get off the stage, run all the way down because we had another show going on. But I was going on later, run down to Caesars, then run to Bally's. Then finish it off over at Showboat. Wow, what a nice it was good times! Yeah, it was rock and roll, man. Just running from show to show, going off. It was great, and each room was usually pretty well because there's always going to be people out here. And the good thing about Atlantic City is the people that come out here. Unlike New York, I do a lot of shows in New York. I'm out there every Monday. I run a midnight show there called uh, the Not Quite Tuesday Show with my brother Adam Gable. Uh -huh. When I say my brother, I mean my brother in comedy. Um, <laughs> Uh, Adam That's Gable, funny. we run, we run a midnight show there. We've been out there for like, we've been out there doing shows for two years, but with the Not Quite Tuesday show, it's a full year. We just made like a year about three months ago. We made a year over there. So that's always popping. But out there is different because that's tourist also. And, yeah. and, but the tourists there are from like, you know, 
you know, freaking other countries. You'll get people mm -hmm. from Denmark and England and Ireland and, and all these different countries, which is great when you when you do well because you know your stuff is universal. People from anywhere can, you know, can relate yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. But in Atlantic City, the tourists that you get are Ohio, PA, you know, Chicago, Detroit, and, and right. like, you know, uh, Florida. And so when you hit the road, these are people that are actually going to follow you and become fans and, and stick with you. Having, having two fans in England is great, but it's not <laughs> going to do nothing for my career. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the good thing about really. Atlantic City is it correlates to when I hit the road. Because mm -hmm. the people that see me in Atlantic City, when I come out to their hometowns, then they come out to see me. So, yeah, so right Atlantic right. City, you know, has been, has been a blessing to me, you know, in so many ways, even just the time. During COVID, we were open. Once they opened up the restaurants, we were the only live entertainment in probably anywhere in, in the East Coast, but definitely in Atlantic City. There was nothing else open, no bars, no clubs, nothing, no live shows. We were the only live show. We were allowed 60 people and uh, we were sold out every single night. I bet you, yeah. And I was doing two night. shows a night, 30, 40 minutes a night. There were some nights, I think the longest I did was like an hour and 26 minutes is the longest I've done so far. One night they just let me go. I was like, go as long as you want. Gotcha. Um, but I was, there was a point I was, I, I'll say, and I'll say this boldly, and I'm pretty sure it's true. I was doing more time as a comedian than any other comedian, definitely in the East Coast. Uh -huh. um, I would probably say the world. I was doing an hour at night, easy. Gotcha. Every single night during, during the lockdowns. That's your so there job. There was a point where I was just building and building. I, I, it's been a great opportunity for me, you know? Well, yeah, you were talking to me about your comedy special. You've retired all those jokes because yeah. you don't want people to come out and see you go, oh, I saw that on the special, right? That or means I just you want them if they see material. me to go home and be like, oh, I didn't I didn't hear him say that tonight. This is right, a different right. Now, you've also got this Rated G podcast, okay? And yeah. I'm sure it's G from Gary G. Garcia and then Rated G, which I'm sure it ain't, you know? And I think yeah. Brian... No, it's not. Who's your co-host, Brian? Brian Licata. Licata. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about this one. Two episodes away right now, which by the time this comes out, I'll be at my 100th episode, which is... Very nice. be a very big milestone. I've had, like, some good people on there. I've had uh, uh, Jimmy G from... Um, Murphy's Law on there. Mm -hmm. I had Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. Yeah. I had Eleanor, uh, Eleanor Kerrigan on there. Mm -hmm. She's a beast comedian. She's also from, um, what was that show? Entourage. Right. So we got some good, some like really good people. And then, and then most of the people you're going to see on my show are people who are going to be stars. Gotcha. You know they're what I'm saying? Like they're coming. making noise. They're up there. These are people I believe in. And uh, these are people to watch out for. I'm Tell me about this one two episodes away right now, which by the time this comes out, I'll be at my hundredth episode, which is very nice. Be a very big milestone. I've had like some good people on there. I've had uh, uh, Jimmy G from um, Murphy's Law on there. Mm -hmm. I had Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong. Yeah. I've had Eleanor, uh, Eleanor Kerrigan on there. Mm -hmm. She's a beast comedian. She's also from, um, what was that show? Entourage. Right. So we got some good, some like really good people. And then, and then most of the people you're going to see on my show are people who are going to be stars. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like they're coming. making noise. They're up there. These are people I believe in. And uh, these are people to watch out for. I'm now you're no slouch yourself. You've even been on Showtimes. The show was called Billions. Tell me about that experience. How you got <laughs> cast, what happened there? That That's a, that's a lot more big. People always say, you might've seen them on Billions. Yeah. People who don't know me did not see me on Billions. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I basically was in the background. I was in the background. I did background acting. I'm very good at, I'm in a couple of movies pretending to talk. But people <laughs> who know me saw me on, on Billions. Like people right. who know me call me up like, yo, gee, I just saw you on Billions. Because <laughs> when we did the shoot, I saw, you know, there were all these seats to the left. And then to the right, there were these two seats. So I already knew. I'm like, that's where the main actors are going to be sitting. You know, <laughs> everyone else didn't pick up on that. So, of course, I picked the seat right next to them. And then everybody saw me do that. So they all started jumping into the seats next to them. And then <laughs> they moved everybody around. But I got to sit right next to the dude. So you see me throughout the whole scene. So yeah. technically, I was on Showtime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So technically, I was on, you know, I was on Billions, you know. Well, you got a great credit for opening I made, up. Apparently, I made, a, I made a, an impact because they wanted to bring me back. Uh-huh. And uh, they couldn't because it was the season I was already in it. They realized they already had me 
on the other one because somebody else had saw me and wanted to bring me on another episode. Oh, okay. I get typecasted a lot in the uh, background acting field. I'm always um, playing like uh, a like a, a prison inmate. <laughs> uh, I had a role where they finally I was a uh, recovering addict number three. <laughs> I was I was hoodlum number two. And what's crazy is when, whenever I go, I always go to wardrobe. And right when I walk up, you know, they'll look at me and go, he's you're good, fine. you're sweet. You're fine, yeah. you're Even if I'm playing a recovering addict or or whatever, he's fine the way he is. <laughs> I don't funny. know how to take that. That is, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. you should be offended and all at the same time be like, well, you know, the truth is I mean, the The person's really good at picking the person they want to play. Apparently, I look at, you know, what are you going to do? You know? Okay, so now, how can people find you out there? on the internet, on social media, how do people, I mean, we can Google Gary G. Garcia. Is that the way to do it? Or you got to, uh, I mean, yeah, that's my thing on everything. Gary G. Garcia is uh, my Instagram. It's my Facebook. Uh, you can go to AC jokes. You know, they have uh, all the house comedians there and all my links are there. But if you go to my Instagram, it has my link tree and it'll link you to everything I, I do. It'll link uh -huh. you to the special. Uh, if you want to check out Rated G, that's on, um, it's Rated G with Gary G Garcia and Brian Licata. But if you put in, just get into the Gary G Garcia, it'll pop up. Yeah. Uh, okay. You just put in Rated G, a bunch of stuff pops up. That's on Spotify. That's on YouTube. I that's, on, that's on anything where you can get, uh, yeah. where you can get podcasts. But uh, if you want to catch all my episodes, go to Spotify. They still support free speech. Yeah. Uh, my stuff gets pulled on YouTube sometimes. Within well, minutes, see, yeah, within I, minutes I, that I put it on. <laughs> that's where I catch you on YouTube because the video goes with it, you know. Yeah. It's not just audio. Yeah, on Spotify, they have the videos as well. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, Spotify, you can now watch videos as well. Great. It's pretty awesome. I also do uh, the JoJo and Scotty morning show every Monday at 7 in the morning. It's called Conspiracy Mondays on the JoJo and Scotty morning show. That's 100.7 FM. And you could also just put in JoJo and Scotty on the Google and it'll bring up the, it's not even an app. It just brings up their page the you can listen live and you can listen to it from wherever you are. The way you end your show, be scared. They can't control you if you, if you're not afraid. Yeah, right? man. How do you say it? How do you say it? Don't let them scare you because if they can't scare you, they can't control you. And that's just the truth. Yeah. You know, it's all through fear that we all look like right now. They're trying to get us into a position where we're dependent on them. We need them to, to make all the decisions and protect us. You're never right. going to be fully protected. No one can fully protect you. No, nope. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that can protect you is love. All we got is us. We're the ones that can keep each other safe by being kind to each other and by, by being helpful and by showing love to each other. You know, we can't depend on them. They don't have our best interest at home. No, no, no. Wonderful sentiment. Now, Gary G. Garcia, everyone at home is poised to press play at the same time as we do here in the studio on YouTube. There you go. So why don't you go ahead, Gary G. Garcia, and give us that celebrity comedian countdown. It. Enjoy the movie. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, celebrity comedian countdown, for that amazing story. Now, usually we're watching silent movies and I hate it because you have that plunkity plunkity plunk piano, but this doesn't. This has some sort of orchestral production and it makes me very suspicious. In 1990, they did this alternate version. 1990, the Harold Lloyd Trust and Coco Play Productions presented an 83 minute version of the film associated with Thames Television International with a musical score written by Carl Davis. Who is that? I don't know. Who is Carl that? Davis? No. The addition of modern credits stretched the time to 83 minutes. So I don't see modern credits, but this is around 83 minutes, and it does not have the plunkety plunkety piano. No, it actually sounds like a movie mu music. Yeah. You know, doo -doo -doo. And as you watch the film with this music, as I have done, look at that ship. You see that ship? Yeah, yeah. It's a ghost ship. Oh, no. Hey, I'm from the Bay Area. Uh, there was a place called Ghost Ship that burned down and killed a lot of people. We don't talk about Ghost Ship. Okay, I understand. Here is the original mammoth medicine show, Professor Powers. But poor Professor Powers has died and left Mary. Mary oh. Powers, not Josh Powers. Mary Powers. That's question. <clears throat> and she's been talked into keeping the medicine show alive. 
Oh, you got the monkey. Listen here, don't let don't take it from me, Pally. Take it from my monkey. He took one sip of my tonic water and boom, look at that boner. Look at that monkey boner. This monkey will give us some funny stuff. Now that's Flash who just stuck his head out and he is like, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. She's speaking with Flash right now. The other dude quote. is a real scumbag. He's like the the muscle man of the show. And um, oh, he's he's a real jerk. I'll tell um, you. His giant name cart. is Sandoni. Muscle man Sandoni. Do you think he's the great Sar Sandoni? No, no. He's, uh, he's the scumbag. Nah, he's the scumbag. Now, this is the sheriff, Jim Hickory. And Jim Hickory's got three sons, but according, to, like, as far as the world is concerned, he only has two. That's Leo and Olin. You see him helping with the with the uh, logs here. Yeah. Now, look. Snap! It breaks. Hold on! Hold on, Hold on Pop. Olin. Let me use my brute strength to bend the chain back. Now, look. Uh, look what they do. I mean, this. Seriously, Mike. I, maybe it's a prop or something, but I could never do something like this. It doesn't matter if there are three guys. Yeah. Look at that. That's nuts. That's could kill your back. They also yes! should be they should be singing Unchained Memory. <laughs> Unchained Loggery. <laughs> that reminds me of Skullduggery for some reason. Oh, here is there the he third is. son. He is the, the youngest brother. son, and he is the wimpiest son, and he is our Lloyd. Um, Harold Lloyd. Now, what's he doing, Mike? What's he doing? He's, he's churning butter, Carl. Right. That'll be our first joke because he's not churning butter. He's churning laundry. Oh, I see. What a like, like he first moment we see Harold Lloyd on the screen, he's very cash. He's chewing. He's yep. just chilling. Like, boom, we're already into him. Oh, right. He is the the thing is, he doesn't look, it's on a kite. Isn't that funny? Very clever, very Rube Goldberg Bergian. No, it's not. You can't yeah. see in that. Every episode, you're talking about the guy who made the mouse trap. Right, yeah. Didn't you notice he lit a bird's feet on fire, and then the bird knocked over a, a congressman talking, and the hot air from the congressman caused Boom. him to lose the rise? Oh. Now, you see him watching them, wishing he could do something like that, but he just can't. Now, he is sad because it's like his father recognizes his two strong kids and not his youngest kid. That was a Bonanza, wasn't it? They always piss on Haas. I, you know. You never watched I, Bonanza? Not really. I, I remember it was on, it was in the reruns, but it wasn't like one of those reruns you saw after when you were seeing Homesick from school. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't really even on the UFH channels at one point. Okay, so the first thing that happens is we put pressure on Harold Lloyd because he needs his white shirt his fancy shirt for tonight's meeting now watch there's continuity problem you see the goat is chewing uh -huh. and it switches the background that is not the greatest of all time boom <laughs> oh no oh no the kite getting... right but it gets stuck in the roof that's pretty clever must it take a hundred takes now, the the thing's really guided by a pole off camera, and we're going to see its shadow, so watch, because it'll okay. take... Okay, here it comes. Wow. No, no, no. Here it is. There yeah. it goes. Yeah, that's it. Totally. But the thing is, it, it could look like the shadow of the string, so it's not such a continuity. Who in this right mind would jump on a big pile of logs and to, <laughs> like that? Okay, now, here we're going to meet bad guy. This is Hank Hooper. Boo. Essentially, the Hoop... The, the, the what about Hoop? ...are a famous family, and the Hoopers don't like him. The Hoops don't like him? No. This guy will go on to commit suicide next year, and I don't have any details on why he did it. Wow. He left a daughter behind, too. Look Jeez. at this funny thing. You don't see that every day on the farm. Now, how did they make that happen for the movie? They killed about six or seven animals until they got the shot. <laughs> they had now look. You see, there's a little continuity area. He he error. He was chasing the pig, and now he was leaning against the fence. So, anyways, like he thinks he's taking his laundry. So he says, "That's my laundry. It's my dad's good shirt." Now look, the film sets it up that the father thinks that Harold is like 
sort of like the ne'er to do well. But you'll see throughout this film that's not true at all. He is smart. He kicks ass. He fights. He is a yeah. true hickory. Yeah, man. Hick I'm, I'm yeah, team hickory, you're... man. Nice. Down the hill. Yeah. He didn't do it on purpose to trick him, but it happened. We, I mean, ouch. Right. Now watch how, watch this trick he'll do. He trips him, gets on yeah. his back, and it retrieves the laundry. Crazy. Now, this is very funny, too. He thinks those two socks are his, but they're a napping guy. So he gives it to the bad guy. Oh, and then the napping guy is like, who took my socks? You try to roll my no! socks. <laughs> He's, we'll never see this guy again. That sock of to me guy. Now watch how he tricks um uh watch how he tricks Hank again. Hank will go up to get the laundry, and it's not clear if he thinks it's his. I mean he must think it's his laundry. Sure. But Harold will come and say, Thank you. Thanks, Hoopy. Hoops. <laughs> No one called him Hooper, right? It's always no, they Hooper. called him Hoops. Here's Dad. Where the fuck is my son? Uh oh, it's another Hooper. The now this guy is the the bad guy for the father. Oh, he has two Hooper bad Maddie guys. Maddie Hooper. Hey, have you seen Hooper's brother around here? Yeah, my name is Hooper. You could call me Hooper. <laughs> hey, Hooper's brother. Okay, so they've collected money from the town, sort of like taxes that are voluntary, to build a dam. It's going to oh. be a very good thing for the town. Son, how many times have I told you, we don't want no more trouble with these hickories. But he's going to have lots of trouble throughout the film, and it's his own fault. Watch him kick him. Watch him kick. See, he kicked him. Yeah. Right in the ass. Yeah, yeah he right deserves to be a hickory, and the dad needs to find that out. Son... Is there gonna, so a lot of movies nowadays with father issues, they're always like, I, I just watched Strange World. It's like, no, dad, that's what you want to do. Right. That's right. just in this movie, right? None of that. He wants to be a hickory. He wants to join the legacy. They're famous throughout the county. And uh, he wants to be one of them. And he, he feels like he needs to earn his place. Well, actually, no, he doesn't feel like he needs to earn his place. He kind of mopes around a lot, and then later he will earn his place. Look, Carl, look, he well, has a string tied to the to the comb to his mirror, so he'll never lose it. Right, it'll hang there. That's a good idea, right? That's a good life hack, yeah. Now, look what... He's, see, he thinks, oh, my shirt's fine. <laughs> he tricked his dad. Now, look, Harold Lloyd wanted more jokes in this film than any of his films so he hired eight gag men eight okay watch he can't come to the meeting because it's no place for boys uh, son. <laughs> son i'm disappointed right and now he'll start moping around damn it and he'll like he'll like do play pretend they put on the sheriff's outfit you'll see so anyway Harold Lloyd wanted this film to be really fucking hilarious. So he hired, I guess, okay, we would call them writers. Comedy right. Writers. Yeah, he gag called, writers. They call them gag men, at least back in the day. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe that's a current today term, too. I don't know. I, I'm not in the business. But if if I was, I would be the top gag writer in the industry. Oh, that's very braggy. Hey, give me a topic. I'll give you six gags by Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to write this joke for a long time. It's about how, like... When jokes are obvious, like you think up a joke that you wrote on your own, but it's been done before and how it's not really plagiarism because you really didn't think it up on its own, your own, but you can't right. do it anymore. So it's like, I wrote this joke and then I saw it on a rerun for Jackie Gleason, right? <laughs> and it makes me yeah. realize I could write for Jackie Gleason. Yeah, and, right. Yeah. You're like, oh man, I was at the wrong time, the wrong place. I still have never made that joke work on a old, you know, to pull it out at an open mic. On maybe well, you and I'll work on it. I'm sure. Look, so now he's like pretending he's a sheriff, and then he gets shamed. His father's looking at him. What are you doing, you little kid? You're not a sheriff. He's so good, Harold Lloyd. You know, we watch a lot of was a huge hit. We watch a lot of Buster Keaton movies, and I kept calling him Harold Lloyd because I love Harold yep. Lloyd so much. Yep. Yeah. 
now we're watching this as we've been doing previous Januarys because uh, thanks to the public domain law in the United States, thank any you, film, Trump. thank you, Trump, for not noticing that law got <laughs> reactivated <laughs> during your administration. If that guy realized that, that the arts were were getting free shit like this, he would no way, man. Have, no way, he man. Got to make money. It was be it, this was not in his radar, but it was in Disney's radar. We had a deal with public domain. The importance of public domain is that culture, we discuss culture, it's in our life, it's part of our life. We talk about Iron Man, we talk, these are part of our lives. And yes. to tell these stories, at a certain point, the gatekeepers have to let go. They have to, it can't be owned. You can't own Sherlock Holmes in, in, It's not reasonable. I mean, the guy who really made, you might own the rights, but you didn't make it. It's not reasonable. It's not reasonable. So they've been uh, making films, songs, books, and putting them in the public domain in the United States. Disney complained because Disney knows their time is up. They can't yeah, make money off of this anymore. They want to make their money. So they, Congress in the 90s passed a law to wait 20 years. Well, we waited 20 years, and now we're here. And this movie from 1927, along with other films, is in the public domain. And by other films, Carl, the jazz singer. Yes. Metropolis. First the first talkie. So Although the whole thing was in a talkie, just portions. Just the just the part where the Jewish guy puts blackface on his uh, on his face. Right. Hey, had his own legacy and had no idea that it was gonna. Okay, so the medicine show stopped by and said, Who signs the permits? He goes, the sheriff signs the permits, but he's not gonna be interested. He ran the last medicine show out of town. So they see Harold Lloyd as you know, he's pretending to be the sheriff and he's he's playing. You know, he's on the porch and they say, this guy's a fucking rube. We'll get him to sign the permit. And that's what they're uh, doing right now. They're, they're, they don't really they're know him. they're scamming him, but they are scamming him. But it's not legit. He's not the sheriff. He's a hickory. So it oh, will it be counts. legit. What a dumbass hickory. Yeah. Hickory dickory suck my dock. <laughs> oh! Oh, the mouse <laughs> ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The other got away. I like that one. Oh, yeah. I don't know what, yeah. Where'd you get that? Is it from a guy named Bill Aronson who goes to every Scotty show. He's a big pain in the butt. But okay. every now and then he writes Name names. Show. Name names. That's Why not? Joke. Why not? This guy is a jerk. He should be called out. He goes and annoys all the comics. He thinks they're his friends. He goes into the back at the comics table and goes, hi, hi, mama. And he just, he like monopolizes their time. I want to talk to him. I want his side of the story. I want to hear his side of the story. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right. His uh, wife is Nancy Aronson and she's a very nice, nice person. So is he giving him brownies? Thank you for the brownies. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, Okay, the chairman's saying we've collected all the money from the town for the dam, so we'll give it to the person we trust the most, our sheriff. But Hooper, you know, is not thinking he's trustworthy. And he goes, what's that? What are you going to do with the money? We're just setting it up. He's going to be the pain in the ass bad guy throughout the film. Oh, it's a hoop. You know, this movie, if it had Hoopers and Sullivans, I'd be like, look out, Hoop, Sully's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, yeah, I guess you could do Hick. and Okay, so here's the medicine show, and here is our hero. It's Mary. Would you drink, would you go to a medicine show and get snake oil and drink it? Well, is the year 1830, and I don't know what the fuck is going on in this world, and I just trust everything I hear? Yeah, I would yeah. buy that. I want to be a He-Man. Well, that's the thing. Like, what are they promising? They're promising a boner, aren't they? Back in the no, 1830s. The, the, okay. So, <laughs> so the San, um, 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 San Tony, uh, Sandoni, San, not the great Sandoni. Sandoni will be a muscle man and he'll be the example. This is what it can do for you. Now, look, he's pretty much going to rape Mary. Right. How can that be? They're partners in a medicine show. They've known each other all this time. You know what I mean? Like, how could he? And why is it this gonna, moment? By mistake, hit Harry on the ass. Oh, holy cow. She's beautiful. Well, I like this guy. <laughs> it, it does convey. Yeah. I like the bow tie. It's very important to wear a bow tie in the middle of nowhere. 
Well, it's 1830. That's as much a tie as a regular tie. I'm going out to the forest. Don't forget to wear your bow tie. Now here comes Sandoni and he sees what's going on. Mary sees it and says, uh-oh, this guy will protect me. Uh, yeah. Better now this is course. either the sixth or seventh Harold Lloyd film that she's been the main squeeze, okay? Nice. Now, this will be the last one that she's in. Now, she has this supporting role in a film called Wings, and the internet raves about Wings. Okay, he's got a stick, but he doesn't see the snake. Of course, Sandoni does. So he thinks he, he scared him off. Right. Oh, right, because he's so waving does a Mary. snake at him. But Mary does, and that's one of the reasons she likes him. Is he going to look down and go, S -s 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 -s. yeah, there you go. You're exactly right, Mike. You could have been a gag man. All right. I was number eight. Put a snake on it. You know, what's funny is most all of the gags got cut. Even though he worked so hard to make so many little jokes in this thing, they didn't help the plot. They didn't move it along. Now, they're really sort of intimately touching for 1870s, 1850s, you know, sure. so they're like both nervous. Mr. Hickory, I don't know how to thank you. Well, I have an idea. Uh-huh, right. Hell, Hickory Log. Actually, it's a love thing. Who told you my name? Oh, the Hickories are famous. You signed You signed away your lead, uh, your deed. Don't you remember? <laughs> when I was in grade school, we just, the Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse <laughs> of my dock. Oh, yeah. I used to go to the Hickory Barn out in Willowbrook Mall and <laughs> get samples. Hell. You know, that it would probably be rural at this time. I want you to know this whole film was shot in California, but it's rural. Yeah. This is today's, um, it's it's Glendale Burbank oh, and near Pasadena. You know that's not rural today. No, it's not rural at all. And yeah, it is funny because you watch a lot of silence and there are like people walking around the forest and you're like, yeah. wow, that's where we're, where the story takes place? Okay. But it's usually because it's outside the field. You that's had mentioned what they had, yeah. You mentioned Wings and uh, that she's in it. Wings also came out in 1927. It is uh -huh. considered, it's known because it's the first Oscar winner for Best Picture. Ah, uh, I see. It's about World War One. I think. On. Okay, I have to tell you something. You see how we're elevating with his yeah. climbing? Yeah, this that's pretty impressive. Innovation. Yeah, this, they put the camera on a literal elevator that they made. It's pretty cool. Now, look, it's really cute. He gets up higher because she's going down a hill. And she's like, what's your name? And she goes, Mary. So, look, now she disappears below the hill. And he thinks of another question. So he goes up higher. Yeah, and there goes the elevator. Second floor. Tree Where branches. do you live? Yeah, second floor. Locations of <laughs> trees. Where, Where do you, do you live? live? <laughs> and a van down by the river. <laughs> oh, in a, cart, a horse and carriage down by the river. Yeah. There she goes, disappearing down the hill. But he thinks of another question. Hey. Uh oh, elevator. This is really funny. Yeah. And Harold Lloyd, look what he's doing. He's climbing a tree like it's so nonchalant. A real tree. Now, this guy was just like Buster Keaton in that he would do all his own stunts and everything. It was very pantomime -y. Uh, Watch this. Watch this. So it's like he won't Whoa. really be falling all that elevation, but it doesn't make it safe. As a matter of fact, he will go on to lose his thumb. He lost his thumb after this film? Yes. There was a bomb literal bomb that he thought was a prop he's like "Ooh, he lost his fucking thumb so in future movies they put a glove on him and it was really realistic you didn't understand that he lost his thumb you never saw it on screen so fucking crazy he uh yeah he's great i love buster keenan i mean uh harold lloyd <laughs> you're doing it again but in reverse you know, so one of the things, my, my father was able to get a box set of Harold Lloyd's uh, collection. So it was uh -huh. silent movies and his talkies. And his talkies are not bad. They aren't bad. There's some decent comedies in there. And one of the things that Harold Lloyd did, and they included in the box set, 
he 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 had his shit together compared to the other silent movie stars. Like he owned the rights yeah. to his films. That's why there's an estate, and that's he had his own uh, estate in, in Los Angeles, and he called it Green Acres. It's no longer cool. owned by the family. But one of the, his things he liked to do was 3D photography, and the box set included his original photography. You would wear the 3D glasses, the red and green ones, and oh. you could see them in 3D. Now watch his creative way, just like the laundry. This is how he does dishes. Oh God, what a great way to do dishes. He spins, <laughs> yeah, he puts the thing so it will naturally unspin. Once again, though, he doesn't, you know, like. He got this from my TikTok video, instructional video. <laughs> Life hack. Life hack. Now watch how he'll put them away. Okay, yeah. Oh, so he's just gonna put the shelf there and then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> If only. Now watch, he just lifts it. Now he will dry his dishes. Oh, with the heat. Now I think that's a wood shelf, right? Uh huh. Right under a flame. You get that charbroiled plate. Mm. <laughs> this tastes great. Did you? Is it? Is it? Uh, <laughs> is it smoked ham? No, that's the plate, sir. <laughs> oh, there it is. What a genius. Now, what they're doing is they're signing the rule, uh, the, like. Dear uh, sir. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're signing a letter that, like, we want to do the dam. I've got all the money. Dear straight treasurer. And basically, all the hickories will sign it. Except for guess who? Uh, bus, uh, Harold? Yeah. No, dad. But then... They'll say, isn't that cute? He wants to sign. Well, hey, you're a hickory. And he will sign. And he'll do it with the biggest John Hancock of the whole thing. Hickory, dickory, duck is how he signs it. <laughs> so he's saying, what do you think of the letters, boys? And the other two give their opinion. And then, like, Harold Lloyd just plays along. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. I concur. He's trying so hard to be a hickory boy. You see how he keeps on not being able to sign it? Now, it's a Love little it. endearing how they're like, isn't that cute? He goes, Dad, shouldn't I sign? He goes, oh, uh, okay. Sure thing, son. <laughs> yeah, he is a hickory. Put your John Hickory right here. Jesus Christ, Harold Hickory. Yeah. Now, all of their names, you know, he's Harold Lloyd, and the other guy is Jim Hickory. His real name is, um, oh, that, no, it's not true. No, it's not true. Leo Wills is Leo Hickory. Olin Francis is Olin Hickory. Uh, well, I was going to say how neat it was that their first name of all the actors was their first name in the film, but it's really not true. It wasn't so, good for them because they meet a Blair Witch later on. Yes. What? So here, it's like, you guys come into the medicine show? It says, medicine show? Who gave permission for a fucking medicine show? And then they're going to real. did you? No, sir. Did you? No, sir. Well, that's there it. Goes the hickories. It. Yeah. So it's like, son! <laughs> Gulp. Gulp. I better drink some of this snake oil. Glug, 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 glug. So he marches his son back in there and says, did you give permission for you? He goes, yes, I did, Dad. He goes, ah, oh, so you're a sheriff now, eh? Okay. He deputizes him and he says, then go shut down the show. Whoa. That'll, that'll be his charge to go down there and kick out the medicine show that he let in. Mary, Mary, you got to close up the medicine show. Quite contra what well, you're doing run DMC again. Right? Yeah, do you want to play that? Mary Mary, <laughs> who's your daddy? Oh, look at that. Star on Broadway. That's weak. Was there a Broadway in 1927? Of course. Broadway melodies in 1927. Run DMC. Mary Mary. No, you're not. Well, you said <laughs> no. We got busted you know for playing it's tricky. Yeah, so we can't be heard in Indonesia. But that's our fan base. We have a restriction in Germany. Oh, our German listeners. Why won't be able you bugging? Okay. Oh, here and we are finally, at the show, and we have the lamest entertainment ever—a horrible, horrible merry dance. 
Uh, listen, man, Mary Dance is what I'll take. Back in, back in the Bakersfield and Burbank, that's, mm-hmm. that's we're we'll lucky to get a Mary Dance. Now, here is He-Man, and this is what the medicine is going to do for you. Now, look, he can't get through because he's a wimpy, wimpy little hickory. Yeah, it's heady, fellas. So, look, he gets sure. an idea. Like, some dog, cro- you see that guy pushed right through. Oh, so he's, he's doing a butt. Right I figured now, he just climb over everybody like they're trees. Now, look, he walked in. Now he's walking out, and that walks Harold out. Huh? Damn it. it. It's as funny as Buster Keaton. Now, look, this dog gives him an idea. Hey, oh, it's a dog. There he go. Wow. No animal. Harold Lloyd always claimed this to be his favorite amongst all his films. In later years, he proudly screened the film in select theaters and film schools. Oh, that's cool. It's not a bad movie so far, right? It's it's and it was a huge hit. This made him the biggest box office draw in 1927. Wow. And we are talking Metropolis and Jazz Singer and, and Wings during that year. Yeah, he was the top box office attraction. <sighs> I really want to try some snake oil. I would totally be in front row. Like, come on. He's like, excuse me. Excuse me. I have to shut you down. Excuse me. You, son, you can have this. <laughs> uh, hey, excuse me, performer commanding the stage. Right. Uh, yeah. If it's okay with you, I'd like to shut down the show. My dad told me. Sure, That's certainly, call, son. Right? But have you tried? Since I got your ear, everyone's ear. Have you tried? Oh, he's telling to go away. Yeah. Never mind that, folks. Pick a card, any card. Excuse me, excuse me, I must insist. He goes, all right, all right, come on up here. Come on up here, sir. Pick, Pick a card. That card. Pick a card. So he basically, okay, he's going to do a trick that proves that the sheriff is out of sight. I kind of don't know what that means. Like, certainly we didn't say out of sight until, like, late 60s. You think, I, like, out of sight, man? Now watch this. Trap door. Jesus oh, Christ. Going. And look who is so loves it. Watch him clap. It's Hank. Watch Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I don't like that guy. Yeah, we're not yeah. supposed to. It's really kind of tragic that he killed himself. I was trying so hard to find the story. Was he sick? Was he a drunk? Did he get maimed? Like, why would he do that? Did he suffer right. from depression his whole life? I couldn't find the answer because he's a footnote. You see, Mike, that's one of the sucky things about doing the research for this film. These guys, you see all these films they were in, and you don't know any of them, you know? He worked with blah, blah, blah. He worked with blah, blah, blah. Well, who the hell is blah, blah, blah? We're out of context. You know, at this point, Carl, I mean, we're old guys and we we might have younger listeners, but this film is pretty old for all of us. Yes. You know, so we don't know the culture, really. (laughs) The star on his butt. Oh, like the the Sneetches. He's looking for, yeah, like the star, the star butted Sneetches. I remember. Yeah. He's looking for his, uh, his, uh, I have my authority. You're no longer a sheriff. Give me your badge and gun. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> um the um the only other thing about hank cooper his name is ralph yearsley and he's english he was british born but he he worked in a lot of hollywood films he died uh, let's see he's born 1896 so he did not have a long life and there's some story there that i just can't tell you all right now i looked up Leo Wilsis, Olin Franstons, Konstantin Romanov, who Sandowski there, Frank Landing. I don't know. The, they're not like, for instance, Frank Landing, an American actor of the silent area era, appeared in 84 films between 1910 and 1934. This is kind of information I was able to pull out because there's nothing relatable to our audience. Look how they're fucking with this guy, man. Ah, uh, man. And there's no Uh-oh. like stunt doubles. You know, that's Harold's ass. Wow, yeah, this man, is crazy. That medicine Ooh. show was fire. Come on, even Jackie Chan doesn't dangle from a trapeze <laughs> uh, thing over a, a now fire. Now, who saves him? Mary saves him. Yay! So now I I bring you down here 
to shut down the medicine show and they've got you stringed up as if it's a lynching and the town burns down. What? You're, you're a hickory. Come on, kid. That's my sheriff. I'll Close. give you 24 hours to get out of town. Who's that? The medicine? Bo oh, the That's hickory. Flash. Are... Yeah, the yeah. leader of the medicine guy. He goes, Flash I'll was... get the key to unlock you, Mr. Hickory. She really likes him. Now, is that Flash, uh, Spider-Man's friend who is such a jerk? No, that isn't Flash. Flash was uh, a high school kid in the <laughs> right in 66, 67. Sure. I doubt. Although there is a Flash in the most recent Spider Man movies, there's a Even guy playing less Flash. reason why this is Flash. Look, he's in the box to hide, and who should see it but the Hoop? Yeah, and Hoop is gonna say, Ha ha ha, I'm gonna fuck him over again, and he locks him in there. Oh no. Yeah, now, now Hoop is happy with the world. Oh, where's Mr. Hickory? Oh, no, where's Mr. I have the key, Mr. Hickory. He's in a, a hickory. Wait a minute. He's in a wicker basket outside of fire. Yes. Now, Mary's livelihood has fucking burnt Burn down. down. So she's got, you know, that was her father's legacy. Now, you can't really say that. You can't really say that that Harold Lloyd. Look at her butt jiggle, man. This is the um, best. Don't say it. Don't say it. butt jiggle. Butt jiggle. Don't it say it. Butt jiggle. It is. Don't jiggle. say it. You don't want to spend an hour and a half in the editing room. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Getting rid of <laughs> jiggle boobs reference. Okay, unlocked her savior. Now it really isn't um, Harold Hickory's fault that this place burned down. It's Flash for being a dick. But right. still, she's gonna look, blame him. No, she's not. No, she's not. Throughout the whole film, she's like, you're the man for me. Now, look, he feels her tears crying. But the gag is, it's also raining. So he's going to be like, wow, is she crying? God's crying. Now, she's oh. crying because she has nowhere to live. She has no income. She has no anything. I mean, her medicine show has burnt down. Oh, yeah, there's the tears. Yeah, but it's really raindrops. I've never uh, seen that gag before. <laughs> yeah, he's a, the gagman. Okay, his na her name really is Jabina. 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 Ralston. Yeah. And she was. Jojo. In, what? Jojo, Jojo. Is that a nickname? Sure. Uh, she would go on to play a supporting part in Wings. Big deal. But apparently it is. It uh, is. She was perhaps best remembered for on-stream chemistry with Harold Lo with Lloyd, with whom she worked on seven films. Um, I don't know. She died in '67. Wow, that's good. That's a, a long time to live. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was born in 1899, which means she was born in the 1800s. It's funny. My son was born in. December 28th, 1999. And when he's going to be a grandpa, they're going to say, dad is so old. He was born in 1999. Like it's I know, long. right. Like what that's we so, think of as 1800s, you know. That's still part of the 1800s. Yeah. yeah. Now she has nowhere to live, nowhere to sleep. So he brings her home to their house. Dad, what was it like growing up in 1980? Oh, it was rough. All we had to watch was Wildcats with Horatio Sands uh, <laughs> growing up in the 2000s. He was streaming movies. There uh, was no such thing as 3D holographic theater cinema in your home. Right, in your home. Okay, so the two brothers are in their pajamas. And I don't know. That means that they don't want to be seen in their pajamas. I don't get the, I don't get it. Like, they're being modest. But the thing is, they're completely clothed. You know, right, their pajamas well, are head to toe. You don't see a dick. I just don't get it. Do they have a little flap on their ass? Yeah, for pooping. Yes, they yeah. do. It's so great. You don't have to take your one piece off. Right. It's not just for pooping. Let's say you wanted like expose your butt. Easy peasy. Now, look, you see how they're sneaking upstairs, but she turned around. I don't get it. I don't get it. They're bashful. Come here, you. Come here, you. Hey, <laughs> hello. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I don't, 
Okay, that is going to be the premise for about, you know, six to eight minutes now. They're modest and shy. They don't want to be seen naked, even though they're not naked. So you have the setup for our gag here. Pretty impressive. So it's nice of him to give her a place. Yes, it is. And now, as you know, back in those days, yes, you only can choose from the human beings in your immediate environment. You know, if you're you're marrying the neighbor's daughter because, you know, that's your, right. So in that same way, these. Goofy dudes are like, it's a girl, there's a girl, it's a girl, there's a girl. So they'll have all kinds of goofy, you know, try nervousness around a girl and trying to get her attentions. And so he's going to go off and make some coffee. Okay. And he's going to try to entertain her with, do you remember there was that... The GIF viewfinder, GA, what was it called? Oh, the viewfinder. You just yeah. said it. So it's the, but but what was, they were called like GAF, GEF. Was it like Fisher Price? Yeah. GEF. Maybe not Fisher Price, but anyway, it's the 1880s version of that. You have two pictures. They're a little cockeyed, so they kind of feel 3D. And you look through a viewer. We'll get oh, I know what you're talking. Oh, I didn't, they're not. Well, viewfinders are 3D. I mean, yes, I, that's they what, are. Yes, they are. And that's what we're going to get here. Do you remember Paris on the viewfinder? No, but I certainly remember Disney World. We had one of Disney World. We had one of Dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. We had one of Grand Canyon. We had a lot of Disney movies, like the, uh, the Seven Dwarves and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like really old Disney movies. G I F G A F. I don't know what's after. Oh, got spooned. They're so modest. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> oh, that must feel really good on your balls. Now I'm they're outside. Them. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, it's the wind. Oh, I'm falling for that because it's a movie. Look at oh, that. We're great. <laughs> <laughs> what they go for? Just get your your balls indoors man see that's the thing about him he really is a hickory he's fucking with them you know he's clever uh he really should be considered as cool as the right. sheriff and his two other two sons god they must be drenched <laughs> yeah what was that the fucking wind again mary i told you why you bugging <laughs> why you bugging Freaking beans. There's something about Mary's. There is something about Mary. Here's the viewfinder. Oh, yeah. Oh, these are cool. So that's what he was into, man. It was really cool to, to see the photos. This is as best you can do for entertainment back then. You did a lot of book reading, a lot of talking, card playing. Right. Uh, etchings. Do you want to come up to my room the and see my etchings? Viewfinder toy. Now, the internet cares that they made a mistake and put the images backwards. I don't know why we care. I know. I've been complaining. Just, about she just saw this brothers for the first time. Oh, my God. Look how wet that hand is. Yeah, it's called GIF mm. Viewmaster Retro Toy Game Animated. Now, we would go on today to have the computer, gra you know, the GIF. That's just a coincidence. Well, don't forget the magic eye. There was a bridge. Remember looking at that, that, that image and then that image pops out, a boat? The magic eye. Oh, in yeah, purple. You stare at it and unfocus your eyes and uh -huh. it will pop. Yeah. 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 I can never do that. It was hard. I would eventually do. Once you could do it on one picture, anytime you looked at that picture, you could do it. But yeah. like the first time you saw the picture, you had to really unfocus. I, where is it? Fuck it. Well, like in, in Purple Onion, the first 10 minutes, they use a magic eye. And I would have been like, yeah, fuck it. I'm done. Movie's over. <laughs> you can tell, you know, I'm not going. Okay. So the neighbors come over and say, look, it is, um, the hickories come over. And that was 
uh, the Hoopers come over and say right. it's improper for some girl to be staying at your house. You need a house where there are other women or otherwise it's improper. And so Hoop kind of trumps them, you know, Harold Lloyd there. So we missed it. But when he was closing the door, um, Hank was like, <laughs> fuck you, right. buddy. Slam. <laughs> nice. No, yeah, Hoop get... trumps him so many times. As much as Harold Lloyd trumps Hoop, Hoop trumps Hank Hickory here. A little tit to tat. So yeah. now the brothers don't know the girl's gone. So Harold will take advantage of the situation and pretend, you know, he will sleep where the girl's the girl is. He's not sleeping on a bale of hay. He says, I'm gonna go sleep in the barn. Yeah, Flash and the not great San San. San uh, and not the Sandoni. Mm -hmm. They have nowhere to sleep either, so they slept in the in some barn. And he goes, "Look, the sheriff's got all this money for some dam or something. We we got no living or income anymore. Let's go fucking steal that money." That's not a bad idea. Let's. I have an idea. Let's. When they build the dam, we could sleep in it. Or we could just take the money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so where's Harold? Oh, he slept in the barn, and there's a lady sleeping in the parlor. She was invited. Oh, you know, he, he te they tell him the story. There she is. Now, don't wake her up. They're being considerate, so they're tiptoeing out. <laughs> They look so stupid. They look pretty good. The old oh, belt. And now, of course, the dad doesn't care about the girl. Uh, I don't know what happened to the mom or anything, but, you know, he's he's, he's a grown man and uh, he's been with women, but the other two have not. So they're going away, but they both will sneak back. Oh, to check out the lady? Yeah, and, like, give her breakfast to say, see, I'm a nice guy. But it's going to be Harold. Yes. Oh, look how he holds. I like that hat. He's like um, uh, Backstreet Boy, uh, Bowery Dead Boys. Kids. Bowery yeah, Boys. Dead End Kids. Uh, he's satch. He has his. Come on, spit. I don't know what you're talking about, yes. blood game. TB, wow. get over here. There All right, syphilis. Satch and Mo, is that there? It was Satch and somebody. Yeah, I yeah. And Gorsi and the other guy. Yes, right. And uh, look, he's hiding that he was breakfast. giving him her breakfast. I don't know why he should want to hide it. Oh, because they all probably have affection for her. Yeah. And all they have affection for is there's a human who's of a different gender. That was back then. You didn't find a girl and find the right girl for you. You just right. found a girl. Now, look, uh, he's got to pretend he's a girl, so he's putting on jewelry. Pretty clever. I learned this from John Candy. And Look at it, he's putting up his finger. Oh, thank you. Give a little pinky up. <laughs> that's, that's what girls do. Now he gets the benefit of having a breakfast with oatmeal and flapjacks. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man, that coffee must be terrifying. Back in the day? Yeah, they didn't have K-cups. No, there's no K-cups. <laughs> thank you. Well, the thing is, like, yesterday at Scotty's... Uh, which would make sense on air because it is Sunday and we're airing live, right? Of course, wink, yes. wink. Wink, so wink. The, they, they, the show was going to start at 9 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock, they put the coffee on that heater. And I was thinking to myself, that's going to be so burnt by 9 o'clock. What are you guys doing? But I didn't say anything. I like, I like bars that have coffee. You know, I, I don't drink, and I always get soft drinks, but, you know, that's kind of – Pain, yes. yes. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, or whatever. You know, so one time I was at this was years ago Thank at the you. I was at the improv. This is yeah. even before I moved to Los Angeles. And I wanted to wake up, but I didn't want to. So I go to the bartender. Thank I'm like, you. Do you, you have any Red coffee. Bull? Oh, and Red he, Bull. And he's like, you No, know, I have coffee. Do you want coffee? And I go, Yeah, I do want coffee. Great. But idea. He, was, he was one of those bartenders where, like, if once you order it, he knows you and he, he knows what you're going to drink. So 
Uh-huh. It was cool. Yeah. Oh, I like. I even like the shitty coffee that he have for people, the drunks that need to drive home. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> so they're both coming. You know, they're both trying to hide that they're going for the girl. You know. Oh, they're uh, blah blah. blah. <laughs> it's the only time he gets brotherly love. Look, they're both. Yeah, that's right. When they think he's a brotherly girl. Oh, and then here comes the chick. Why are you bugging? They're like, hey! hey! Mary, Mary? There's two Marys. Mary, Mary, why are you bugging? <laughs> Wait a minute. Harold! Nope. Oh. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> right he jumps out the window. <laughs> Nuts. Now they're running. Now, this is a pretty good gag. Like, where is he? Where is he? Where do you Camera's at an angle, right? <laughs> smart you see how smart right. he is he's as good a hickory as any look how hungry that goddamn horse is look uh, at you that. can see the ribs yeah yeah now he's got plenty of hay to eat so i don't get it tripping do you, him do you ever like have a bad steak or hamburger and you say oh i can see the marks where the jockey hit the uh... <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> wow, right that's yeah. far if, did you, I worked at Burger King in high school, and you know those char marks? Yeah, they're right. On the frozen patty already. Yeah, I know. They, they're painted awful. on. Hey, it doesn't matter. We eat it. Food. You know, if you watch a uh, sport, uh, Murlox, sport like Murlox, what was it? The fast now, did food. Did you see the bug? Did you see the bug? Yeah, it went right in him. Yeah. Why you bugging? So supersize me too, hot chicken. The the documentary sequel. He creates I a chicken this. restaurant. Did you see the sequel where he creates a, yes. a chicken patty that's breaded and has grill marks on it? Look at this. Look, you see the hat? Yeah. We think it's the dad. Again, these guys are idiots. They only live with their, their brother for like their entire lives. Right. They're like, okay, dad. So Okay, Barry. Super, there, there'll be another gag. That's why I keep in. Wait, there's dad. Hey. Oh. Uh, let's come back to the... Um, Super Size Me story. He go, Harold's caught. He goes yeah. to look. It wasn't hitched. Look at how he just hops over shit like this. Yeah, I know. He's a hickory as much as them. I, oh, I mean, right in, the in real life, yeah. He's Now watch. Watch this. He goes, here, Dad. Here's your jacket. Uh-huh. Here's <laughs> your beat hat. Him up. Right. They're going to beat him up. They're going to beat up their dad. And who do you think will win a fight between father and son's? Yeah, you're asking me. His own brother. He's like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> there is no question. Like, why did you beat me up? Right. Pow! Whack! Batman. Okay, now the two sons are beat, and Harold will take credit for that when Mary shows up, as if he's a tough guy. But Mary doesn't really hate the brothers. They haven't really. No, he's just she's just trying to impress. She's just trying to impress. There comes Mary, right? So he goes, "Oh, uh, uh, all right. Listen, you fucks. You're gonna <laughs> get that again if you ever try this. It won't let you off so easy. Super impressive. Okay, tell me about Super Size Me too. They all on so the Morgan Morgan Spurlock decides to create his own chicken fast food chicken restaurant because that's yeah. the new thing. So he talks to a bunch of food nerds, you know, the, the specialists, and they talk about how you can airbrush the grill marks on it, or you can deep fry it. And I think what he does is both. He deep fries it and then <laughs> paints the grill marks on it. And then when people come to his restaurant, he points it out. Yeah, he puts it on the signs. It was a great film. So she says she's earning her board at the Hooper's house by helping with the yard. The lady work. The lady work. And this is the, uh, you know, his enemy, but he doesn't really care. If she's the, the, the daughter of medicine show guy, I would be like, can you make some hooch for me? Well, he died. he died. But I mean, like, she knows how to make this stuff, right? Like those guys would be like. I don't know. It's not clear. There's never any real backstory. It's sort of like sh- the the dad was doing it all, and she was part of it, doing dancing. Now that he's gone, Flash was like, "Listen, this is our income. Let's keep it going." And she reluctantly agreed. Reluctantly. 
Okay, so now the brothers are going to try. Yeah. Well, well, well. <laughs> so ugly, man. <laughs> they, they definitely look lived in, for sure. Oh, go through the back door. Do you, yeah, do you, goes, do you, yeah, that'll teach you. See, really, he was running around to get to the back, but he's pretending that he chased him. Can I, I'm going to listen to the chase music. If you leave it on for a second, you'll see that the score is thought up, thought, well thought out, and goes along with the movie. It has a more dramatic thing than the piano tinkering away. There's Hooper Dad saying, come on, let's fucking go. All right. Bye, Mary. They're oh. so, I don't know if the word is jealous, but they just can't believe that she likes that little wimp. But as you and I know, he's not a. Oh, he's a pretty savvy guy. Wrong, but yeah, he definitely deserves to be. Now they're going to, as soon as she's gone. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, they're right behind. Trying to save his own butt. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, anyway. Hi, darling. I guess back then you could do that. Like, you can hold a conversation while someone's on a <laughs> carriage. Bye again. She doesn't look annoyed by that. She doesn't even look perplexed that he's doing it. What's exciting about this shot is that a lot of times I see old movies, they're just backdrops. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they have yeah. a screen. And they have, but this is like actually shot, shot with the camera moving and you can see the brothers behind Look them. Look what drops. Right. It's not. Now there was a painting when we saw the goat and it changed. I don't know why, but. Okay. So she's lost her stuff and he's got it. Okay. And they've lost him. Sat. Uh -uh. That's. If only there was like carriage wheel track marks or something. Now look. He's pretending he's with the girl so that they won't beat his ass. Right. And that's what I see as an audience member. Yeah, I see that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> he's so clever. Some gag man wrote that and he took credit. Now, there yeah. was a director shuffle on this film and it was really, really bad. This director was pretty much, this whole movie was pretty much directed by the director that gave us the famous All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, really good guy from, from last year, the German film. God, no, that guy's still making that movie. Yeah, <laughs> not no, the original. There were four films of All Quiet on the Western Front, and the 2022 was our latest. Um, this guy's name was Lewis Milestone, and he was a big deal. He was he was sort of nobody. He joined the Army Signal Corps in 1917, and he was he made educational short films for U.S. troops. Well, he took that skill and went to Hollywood. He was under the wing of this director, William Setzer, and that's it. He had a career. He started off as a, a, um, a cutter, then he became an editor, then an assistant director and screenwriter, and then a director. Oh. He directed for Howard Hughes. Now, Hooper Hoop's going to be embarrassed because it's like. You're going to the you're going to the damn thing with me, and he goes, "Well, no, I'm I'm going with your arch enemy." And he goes, "Well, if you're not going with me, you're not going with anybody." Damn it! Look at this. Boom! Harold right in the first. ear. Right in the fucking ear. Yep. That would lead later to him being so humiliated he committed suicide. No, he'll go after him. Look. Huh. He oh sees come on, him. that's come on. I already yeah. got fooled. Set up. Once. You Shame saw how you flowing did. it was? You yeah. know what it'll be, yeah. Yeah, fool me twice. Uh, what? <laughs> it's the, was, it's the second cool. director. Now look, they're walking off. Hey! Fucking shit. A lot of cursing out of me today. Well, there's a lot of cursing in the original. You just don't hear it. Now, they're not holding hands or anything, even <laughs> though they Here's clearly it. like each other. Hey, fuck you, fucking neighbors. <laughs> you don't hear well, it. Now, why is everybody walking away? Because the money for the dam got stolen. Oh, so there's no dam tonight. Damn. Damn. When did we get, what was the line in uh, Vegas Vacation? Or, what, or no. The dam, it, yeah, where's it, the damn bathroom? Uh, I'll answer Look, I take my damn photos. <laughs> Now, 
This is this damn electricity is pouring through seventeen thousand damn volts. <laughs> Ask me any damn question you want. Where's the damn bathroom? <laughs> now, Daddy Hooper, of course, is like someone broke into your house, stole the money from the box, and you don't know shit about it. He's like yeah. basically saying, "I think you stole it." But don't they realize, like, there was two other strangers besides Mary? No, because, well, I mean, they're strangers in town, and the medicine course, show burned yeah. down, but they're not putting two and two together. The so, medicine show burnt down. No, but what you're talking about, Mike, they're about to think. You see, he sees the medicine show... They're the only strangers. Yeah. So he's like, I think I know who did it, and I'm going to go get him. But then Hooper's like, wait a minute. You're not going anywhere. So he can't leave. He's the sheriff, isn't he? Yes. But he's being accused of a crime here, and there is no, like, due process of law necessarily. Like, you can't hold me without charging me and arraigning me. He's just being accused verbally. He's like, oh, you piss me off. So he says, all right, kids. He goes to his two sons. Give him the guns. Give him all the guns. He goes, you go get those fellas from the medicine show and bring them back here. So his strong, strapping, deputized sons are assigned to the task, but they won't accomplish it. Guess who will? The kid brother? Son, you might get hurt. This is a man's job. Fucking shit, Dad. Oh, come on. I didn't put on my bow tie this morning for not right. nothing. For, no, you're right to say not. That's for 1800s, not? 1800s. I didn't put this bow tie on for not. <laughs> as one says. <laughs> yeah, as one says in 1830. Now, they're off to find him, and shucks, that's depressing. And here's Mary. Why aren't you going with your brothers? She doesn't want to say, because I'm not respected. Now, they don't give us a placard for how he explains it. So I guess you could see from his behavior. Oh, there oh, we go. You excuse me, excuse me. There's not that many placards in this movie. They, the story moves along quickly. Yeah. Why uh, do we call them placards? Because I don't know how to pronounce it. And you've because, been letting me. No, that's right. Placards. It, oh, all right. I don't know. Placard? Captain Placard? Now, you just flew on a plane a bunch of times recently. Do you remember them saying, pay attention to lighted signs and placards? You're saying it right. Okay. What what lighted signs? Yes, don't smoke. Which I immediately put out my cigarette when that lights up. I think they're lit signs and placards, but I'm not saying anything. Yeah. Now look at him talking her up. Uh, look at her talking him up. Do you really believe in me? Oh yeah. Look oh wow. Hey, that, that was right on the lips. And Dude. this is 1827. Hayes' office is gonna kick your ass. Yeah, right. There wasn't really a... Is this, is this pre-code Hollywood? Yes. Okay. So Hoop is like, you're letting him get away. He's the he's letting her get away. She's part of the medicine show. Okay, now he's going to get kicked onto the rowboat and he's going to uh -huh. shift positions. But I didn't even notice until the internet told me it was a continuity error. Bonk! I was going to say, how do they get him on the boat? Now look, the do you see him shift positions? Watch. See? It's yeah. hard to... Hardly, right? He, he got hit in the head and he fell right into a boat. God yeah. bless that take. I'm not, and I don't care he will drift it. right to the place where they've got the money. Come on. Come on. Well, you sure like the the Ramsey didn't... Didn't he like they find the... Anyway, I was going to make a Moses joke. Like uh -huh. the, the basket goes down the Nile. He just but. happens to go to the Pharaoh's house. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true, too. God, you're yeah. right. God does not know how to write monkeys? stories. Yes, I remember this monkey. 
that is going to let him know this, this I uh, luck by good fortune. It's called the black ghost, this ship, but there won't be any ghosts, you know, yeah. it's just sort of an abandoned ship. And we saw it in the beginning and I mentioned it. Right. He the goes, black hey, ghost look, ship. look, and he throws it down there. And what should it be? It's that letter that they all signed. Wait a minute. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is, I didn't call it out when they did it. These are all the people who uh, who contributed to the damn money. And he goes, wait a minute, the damn money. It's on the damn boat. They got the goddamn money. Okay, now he will lose his rowboat, which you will think means trouble later. But somehow it's not trouble later. Oh, he gets, well, he's going to. It's like he's stranded now or something. But that never pays off. Well, this is like a new act, right? We're going to just have uh, yes, shenanigans that's right. on the boat. Well, we're basically heading into Act 3 here. Okay. Uh, he, and I would say we're in Act 3. I would say we're in Act 3. Now, because th the money's been stolen and it's the final battle, the ticking right. clock, the final Jeez. race. You know, it's the... Right. So he's super stranded. Now the internet wants to tell me this is a continuity error because it's all sunny and a second later he'll be in a shadow implying that the sun has changed position, but I didn't even notice. That is like I've watched this movie a hundred times. Right. Yeah. Okay. I well, don't think anyone knows either. Now it now he's in the shadow of Yeah, the but wall it's a thing. it's a close up. Yeah, you know. I know. Who cares? It was cares? all sunny on the deck. No, have you so Harold Lloyd's one of his famous films is Safety Last, where he's dangling yes. from the clock hand? Yes, exactly. And that's one of the reasons why they say he was like daring. He was a, a stunt, you know. But that that said, the stunt he did was dangerous, but it wasn't what was on the screen. They actually, you know, did some Hollywood magic and had a clock not too far off the ground, but shot it so it looked like he was way out there. Um, okay, so Lloyd hanging from the hands of a high clock above the street. Dangerous, but risk exaggerated by camera angles. Yes. So you're saying it was the other way around. It didn't look as dangerous as it really was. No, I'm saying that it looked like he was dangling off this clock tower. But however, oh. when they shot it in the studio or whatever in the lot, it was a stage. Like it was, it, it, they used camera angles to cover up the fact that he wasn't that far off the ground. It was still a dangerous stunt, but it was not. It was not... still dangerous, but they made it. Yeah, Safety Last, 1923, considered one of his most enduring images in yeah. cinema. Lloyd performed lesser stunts by himself. Now, you know, Keaton did all those stunts, seriously dangerous things. And it was seriously stupid, too, but he was young, he right. was making a movie. And I think the language of movies is that if you have a little girl, you kick the little girl and it looks funny, even though it hurts everybody. You know what I mean? Like the girl goes yeah. boink, 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 and you can move on. Like all this stuff. <laughs> now, so basically the, okay, whenever there's a pot of money laying around and you've got two bad guys, there's going to be a fight. There's going to be one guy trying to take it all or something. That's what's going on. So they don't know that Harold Lloyd is here. So we're going to see a bunch of gags in which he's hiding. Okay, now, it's unrealistic, but this is a movie. They were only lit by a candle. It's fallen out. And now it's fucking dark as night, man. It's not, it's not catching on fire like the last scene with the medicine now, show? Right, it is not. Now, he sees Harold Lloyd and, like, kind of... No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Excuse me. Excuse me. He has now basically killed Sandoni and put him. Okay. Who should come in but the monkey who will out him? Uh, right. I feel backwards. He like fucked up Flash and shoved him down there. I think he's dead, but he might just be knocked out. We won't really interact with him again. We're going to have is it? Sandoni. What is it, Lassie? What is it? Timmy fell down the well? He goes, look, you fuck, right here, you dummy, look. As if a monkey's got a human brain. Hey, Listen, the monkey's you get the money back. He's the smartest guy in the boat. They're on a boat, and the monkey is revealing Harold Lloyd. It makes all perfect sense. <laughs> now we're going to get a soup. Now look, it's bright daylight. Yeah, no, that we're I agree with. A super, super long sequence 
in which they're going back and forth. Do you think this is sped up now? The yeah. old silent movie? I don't. Now, Sandoni will get the best of Harold Lloyd very often, but Harold Lloyd will get the best of Sandoni just as many times. Yeah. Since you don't know it's a long sequence, it's a fun chase. It's a fun <laughs> chase. Oh, this is like, it's. it reminds me of Jackie Chan. I mean, it's just what I want to watch in movies. You know, just chaos and a guy beyond doing beyond stunts beyond you know yep and that's what you're gonna get where is he where is he where is he could he be in the closet hey hey he's in here a fucking monkey now the monkey's gonna get his shoes and the gag here i don't think it's a believable premise but the gag is the sandoni will hear the shoes thinking it's harold oh harold yeah, thinking it's Harold Hickory. Look, clump, 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 clump. Oh, he's going up the stairs, clump. Oh, wait, is the music doing clumping noises? This monkey is so trained, man. This monkey is so cooperative. He does everything he's supposed to in the film. Right. Look how he's hanging on. There's a lot of animals. We've watched a dog do his thing. We watched how this monkey. Yeah, I know. We saw a goose chase the tail of a pig. How we saw a be? pig wear a hat and walk down the hill. Well, that you can put a hat. Yeah, him. oh, what, one take? That's not a one take shot. Look, so he thinks he's hearing, he's always on the roof. Bonk, 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 bonk. Hey! Uh, monkey. How trained is this monkey? I know, I haven't seen a trained monkey since monkey business with uh, Harvey Keitel. Oh, that was trained. Florida birds. Gotcha! Huh? Oh, damn it. It's just my monkey wearing Carol's shoes. Damn, I can't believe I fell for that again. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm a fucking monkey. Yeah. <laughs> After all that. Okay, now, he's got the money, and there'll be a continuity error. Like, he collects all the money, but then it spills out. Ah, it's not even interesting. <sighs> they have a story to tell. I'm okay with it. So, once again, Harold has been bested. Because now he's got the money, but he finds what looks like a rifle, and he's going to best. Hello, Sheriff. He goes, huh? The sheriff's here. Stick him up. Huh? Oh, it's a pipe. You keep him covered, Sheriff. I'll get the money. Why would he say Sheriff instead of da not Dad? But okay. Well, they're on the job. I guess, yes. Yeah, well, you got to keep the personal shit off the stage. What an idiot. Bonk. <laughs> what? I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I fell for that for so long. Perfect. Huh? Oh. <sighs> so this director was one of the first. He made up. You know how, like, um, a camera will be on the dolly on tracks? Yeah. He made it up. It's there a milestone. Tracks. It's a milestone move. Just like his name. His name is Lewis Milestone. Yeah, it's a milestone. So you were saying the director got taken off this film? Yeah, there was some sort of problem. Um, okay, production originally began with the director, Lewis Milestone, but due to contract difficulties with Warner Brothers, he had to resign. Due to contract problems with another studio, Lewis left the production after having filmed the majority of the film in an uncredited capacity. He was replaced with Ted Wilde. Wilde had to leave the film due to illness. He later died of a stroke. This guy died uh, at 40 years old. So Harold replaced him with two gag men as directors. It really didn't go. J.A. Howe and Lex Neal. But Lloyd wound up directing most much of the film himself as he did with most of his films. He never took credit for directing, only producing. So they had a great director for most of it. And when they were in trouble, they were just like, fuck it. Let's just finish this film. Finish the film. Bonk! Out. Bonk! Why, why isn't that... Why is he not in pain? You'll find out. Bonk! It bent the... Whoop! Oh. <laughs> oh! Damn it! Jesus, what a crazy stunt. 
Now, luckily for Harold, Sandoni cannot swim. Please. Okay. Are they by the dam? No, there is no dam. They collected money for the dam dam. But isn't there like a dam lake no. nearby? Well, no. Their party was the like, like sort of christening or beginning like like the treasurer is going to come get the money and now it'll be funded. So that was what that event was. I got you. The money got stolen. Now look how good Harold is. Like he He, he does help. Knows, him. Right. Not so great Sandini. He's a hickory. Now this, Sandoni will best him. He will best Sandoni. Sandoni will best him. He will best Sandoni. But in the end, you did you gotcha, Mario. Do, 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 <laughs> Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Throwing barrels. You gotta bring up the Donkey Kong. Do, 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 He's a tenacious. contender here. Yeah, yeah. He is just as good as his brothers. And he he's just not as strong as them, not as old as them. But he'll he'll fight. I mean, look at that. Pow. Yeah, this is good fighting. Every time guard. he thinks Sandoz Ooh, right in the neck. Better. Every time he bests him, you think he's out of it. He bests him back. Back into the water. <laughs> And then I can't swim. I can't swim. Right. But Harold yes. can swim. He's going to take advantage of that right now and try to murder Sandon. San, San, God. Sand Sardastic. He's, he's going to try to murder Sardastic. Sandoni. <laughs> Sardonic. Sandoni. Sardonic. Lloyd made nearly 200 comedy films, both silent and talkies, between yeah. 14 and 47. His bespeckled glass character was a resourceful, ambitious go-getter who matched the zeitgeist of the 1920s era in the United States. Usually his films are in metropolises, but this was one of his rural. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you should check out. His silent movies are good. You know, didn't we, uh, Preston Surge, I oh, God, I wish I had my shit together. He made a movie called College uh, where he was like. Uh, well, that's a, that's a. College is a Buster Keaton. Oh, okay. I'm thinking Buster then. Okay. He is about to do the greatest thing to to really incapacitate. He's hog tying. Hog -tying. Well, that's just the beginning. He's really going to fucking incapacitate him. And he's going to fuck him up all the way back to the dad. Okay. I'm, I can't wait to see this. He's going to drag his body. Now, here comes the son to report... The fuck I know, Dad. I don't know. No. Because no, nope, we couldn't. We went clear beyond the county. We can't find a trace of them. Now Hoops will actually say it. Jim Hickory, I believe you stole that money. I Big agree. Fight. Big fight. He's saying what we're all thinking. <laughs> I think Mary. Goodness, Mary, you've got big tits. He's, I'm just saying what we're all thinking. <laughs> your headliner. Now it's time to bring up your headliner. Okay, now. See, the, the internet thinks it's another continuity error. I don't agree. No, the money was there. The money, it's all put away, and then there's some left on the table. Now, we can't see to the <laughs> right. Now, nah, the internet's probably right, but it's not that big a deal, a continuity error. Here's my least favorite gag in the film. Your least favorite gag. Yeah, he can't reach. Is that funny that he can't reach? It's funny that Harold Lloyd's oblivious to it. Yeah. As many of life's dangers. Okay, so now all the money's put away. And when he runs away, there'll be more. Oh, God. <laughs> oh the money's gone. The Out through the porthole. Is that a big deal? What did the... No. I don't give no. a shit. You're right. right. And also, like... Whatever those dollars are, they really represent serious money back then. Okay, watch. This is how he completely incapacitates him and bests him. Oh, uh, I just wanted one lifesaver, not the whole roll. Yeah. Now the money is in the lifesavers. Oh. Intentionally? Did we watch him do that? 
Well, the money was in his hands, and oh, I don't I think it was intentional, but that is what ended up happening. So look, he's tying him up so that all the life preservers say the same, and this guy is stuck. Oh, what were, nice what voice. That? This is like itchy and scratchy. Like you just can't leave him alone. You got to put him on a crane and drag him up. <laughs> <laughs> this guy didn't commit suicide after dealing with all this shit? No, he was the right contender to, to, to do it, but it was hoops. Now look what we got here. Let's go waterboard him. Yeah. Well, no, but he's going to ride <laughs> like a boat. Oh, that's crazy. Remember, he lost his rowboat. It never yeah. became a problem because he did this, you know? It wasn't like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So now he's going to broom his way home. <laughs> People pay, hey, guys would pay good money to get, uh, to do this. Something dirty. Now, it doesn't look fun. Really, look, he put the broom on his face. I know, it doesn't look fun. awful as an actor. Well, as an actor, you're, it must be terrible. He smacked him. Yeah. So the money's in there. It's going to be dry. The money's in his, in the bad guy, in Sandoni's hands. Did I say it right? God damn it. I have to Scar. Check Scar. Scar Sandoni. Has Don't fix me up. Sandoni. Sardonic. Sardonic. Okay. <laughs> now. Yeah. They're like, everyone now believes what Sheriff says. And it's like, you know, he's turning in the badge. Yeah. And it's unclear, but I think they're going to fucking lynch him without any jury court. And look how he's not objecting. He's a hickory dude. Now look what. Yeah, look at him. I can't I can't believe this poor fucking actor. Right. It's a real actor there. That's not a dummy. No. But maybe you know, it is here. I don't know. Well, right here, yeah. It has, I mean, there must be some kind of trickery. It's I mean, you know, if this was now, it would be CGI and there would be like bird shit landing on his face while it turns around or some bullshit. Yep. Now you see how Mary is tied up also. She's one of the medicine. Sure. She planned this. She schemed it with the other two. Now, here he comes. Here he comes. Our big hero. Now, look. We're losing some life preservers as he goes along. Look at did that. You, this when is you were, all practical, man. When you were younger, did you ever try to smoke pot through a, a lifesaver roll? <laughs> no. Look. You, you, hoops threw it at his head. Come on, save the day. Da, 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 da. Yeah, what there a goes my sure favorite. Jeff, Jim, Jim Hickory is, right? He's just taking it. He's going to get killed. Yeah. Bonk! Oh, my God. <laughs> we don't know if that was a real tree branch. It is a movie. Yeah, no, I know. It is a movie, but this guy is getting fucked up. Whoa! Who should it be? I've Sunny got the driver. fucking me! And dead... He's a freak. Here it is. It's like, whoa, whoa. that's my son. Don't lynch my no, dad. No, He's no, innocent. <laughs> no, dad gets the money. Here you are, father. And look, the my. brothers love him too. Yeah, Save they're like, life. that kid brother of ours. All <laughs> you had to do no, was save me from a lynching to get my love. <laughs> that's it. This was released surprised. January 22, 1927, distributed nice. by Paramount Pictures. It was a box office success. It has a horrible tag. Oh, there goes Hooper, who's shamed. Yeah. Now there look, goes Mary. Why is walking away? I don't get that, but. Oh, Mary. Oh, Harold. Now, why? If she's looking for Harold, she knew where he was the whole time. We need a couple more minutes of stick before we wrap up. Now, look, they want to kiss each other and hug each other, but they just can't. It's 19, you know, yeah, it's 1890. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to. Who's gonna this guy? Period. This is that act three, like you think it, there's one last battle, but it's more of an epilogue kind of battle because he doesn't. 
In oh, modern yeah. movies, it's supposed to be you think you won, but now you didn't. Well, this time it's sort of like you think you won and you did, so you're going to extra win. I don't right. know. Right. Oh, yeah. Pick a fight. It's my only criticism. Now, here comes all the dust, so we can't see what's happening. And when it the is. dust clears, he's the victor. And then do we see the end? Kind of. Oh, yeah. Look, he's going off in the sunset with his girl, with Mary. Oh, right. uh, there he is. Ouch. Oh. Now he's going to touch her. Up. Touch her. Put your arm around her. Oh, no. Yeah, see? She doesn't. She did first. it. Oh. Oh, peanuts! Finish wrong. It's oh, that's peanuts. it. No credits. Hey, well, that was the kid brother. Uh, Carl, what you, what you think of the kid brother with Harold Lloyd? Loved it. Great film. Yeah. Terrific. Uh, yeah, it's strange when we do great films, but I love yeah. it. It's yeah, it's not I'm usual. A, it's no, it is not usual. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God! So I'm looking at at uh, YouTube. There was a movie from '87 called The Kid Brother, aka Kenny, and it looks like a boy without uh, bottom limbs on a uh, hitchhiking with a skateboard. Anyway, so enough about that. We had just watched the 1927 The Kid Brother. Now in the public domain, think? I loved it every yeah. second of it. Yeah. It was really funny. Uh, it's great. It was a great movie. It was very hard to riff off of a funny movie. I just, you know, you it. would think like this public domain would take us back to crappy movies, like that horrible movie we saw that Charlie Chaplin loved. The, um, oh were, god, yeah, they, what was that no, guy? Name? Yeah, with with Harold Lloyd's around and Buster Keaton's around, and that, um, uh, Henry, uh, he, um, that other one we saw, he was pretending to be a baby. It was a really great artist back then. What was that film? He remember he walked uh, with mommy dearest, right? Um, tramp, tramp, tramp. There are some great films in the twenties. Funny stuff. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, we're really lucky. So it was kind of cool. It was kind of a nice break from watching crappy movies that fail. Oh, right. gosh! Speaking of crappy movies that fail, Carl, <laughs> it's time to talk about next week's film. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. We're doing the old switcheroo. As you know, Carl, how many times have you watched this movie to research? Uh, this was four, but in honesty, the third time I watched this film, I really was skipping through, trying right. to find these continuity things and trying to find stuff I missed. So I would say I saw it two times and then right now with you and a little extra. Okay, well, sounds good. Well, next week's movie, we're doing the old switcheroo. I am going to do the research. I'm going to watch this movie a bunch of times. Thank you. And Mike. write down notes. Thank you. I'll tell you the reason. I watched a documentary on Tubi from last a couple years ago from the actual director of this film. Wait, Tubi or not Tubi? Tubi. That's my question. No, no, the answer is Tubi. Uh, and well, the movie we're, next week we're going to watch from 1974. Ghost in the Noonday Sun. Uh -huh. This is a Peter Sellers, Spike Milligan pirate movie directed by Peter Medek. And I learned about this movie by going to Tubi and watching a documentary about this movie that came out a couple years ago from the actual director. This is one of the few times where a disastrous bad movie documentary, about a documentary <laughs> about a bad movie is actually directed by the director of the bad movie. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. Very weird. So we're basically going to be watching. I'm going to. We'll be watching Ghost in the Noonday Sun from 1974. I found the trailer. Um, Bertha Doc House has it, Carl. Okay. Uh, do you want to watch it? Okay. Let me go there. Hold on. No, no. Actually, I take that back. This is. It's for. Uh, there's no trailer for Ghost. There's trailers for the documentary, The Ghost of Peter Sellers, but there's Let's not, not watch it. Let's nah, watch the real not. movie. We'll watch the real movie next week. It is a pirate movie starring Peter Sellers. It has notorious. It was never theatrically released. It was on video in the 90s. And that's how, and, and now of course- I'm not going to watch this film on purpose. I'm not even watching it. I will be the audience. Fair enough. Sounds great, Carl. That's what I did for my that kid brother. I will watch the documentary. I, again, I'll watch the movie. I'll get some more research and we'll we'll watch this film. It's a- uh... <laughs> Oh, it is ripe. And speaking of ripe, stay, keep listening. We are uh, in knee deep in public domain movies that came out as well as the Razzie nominations are going to be announced shortly. And we will be doing a special Razzie episode where we go through all the nominations for Worst Picture, Worst Director, and 
we're gonna we'll watch every single film and we'll talk about it and we'll yeah. we'll, we'll give our votes as Razzie members. Spend money streaming this bullshit. I Go am into a Red Box. Academy a member now. Raz Academy member. Yeah, are you a Raz Academy member? Me too. So as Raz voting. Academy members, voting. we're voting. We're gonna watch every single stupid. We're paying money to see every awful movie. And we'll let you know. So that's coming in the next couple of weeks. But next week, it's Peter Sellers, Spike Milligan, The Ghost of the Noonday Sun, 1974. Ugly Sundays is coming up next on Mutiny Radio. So don't touch your dial. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel. And that's it. Carl, anything you want to promote before we get out of here? No. Go to carlsucks.com. Great. Carlsucks.com. We are out of here. See you guys later. We love you all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Let's watch a full-length movie. On YouTube with Mike Spiegel.